one challenge facing iPad users early on was the ability to save files. There's no flash drive, there's no USB port on an iPad, so there's no way you can stick an external memory card into an iPad, save your files, and transfer them to another computer. However, there, there is now applications that allow you to do essentially saving to the cloud or saving to remote, to remote hard drives. One of those applications that uh, works fairly well in K-12 environments is called Dropbox. Dropbox originally started as a desktop app where you could save files from one computer to a server or a remote server, if you want to say the cloud, and then access those files on, remote, on, on a secondary computer, either at home or in another classroom. So students could be working on something on one computer, have to stop, save it, save it to the, save it to the uh, Dropbox, and then open it up on another computer in the computer lab or at home and continue working on those files. So it was a remote, uh, essentially a remote hard drive for use to save files. This particular capability is now uh, accessible to the iPad and Dropbox creates a app that you can download from the App Store and install onto your iPad and give you the same capability. Right now I'm inside Dropbox and you can see all my files. I can create folders, I can um, open up files, S certain files open up um, in native in in, um, on the iPad. So PDF documents, those will open up directly within uh, Dropbox if you choose to. There are a number of ways to get files into your um, Dropbox. Uh, you'll notice that uh, at the bottom there are essentially four buttons or four icons, Dropbox, Favorites, Uploads, and Settings. If we go to Uploads, we can go ahead and upload files from our images gallery, our photo albums, directly into um, Dropbox. So I can go through here and find an image and I can take and upload that particular image into a particular folder. So maybe I want to select a folder here and I'll go to Photos and then I'll just go ahead and create a new folder and we'll call this Demo. And then I'm going to go ahead and upload that particular image into Demo. So now it's going to go ahead and upload that particular file into that new folder within my Dropbox. And there it goes. Also within certain applications you have the ability to upload files um, directly from the iPad application. I'll give you an example of that in a minute. So now we've just uploaded an image into a folder in our Dropbox. So let's say for example that I'm working in Inkpad which is a uh, vector paint application, which we'll probably do another tutorial on at a later time. Um, if I wanted to, say, save one of these files into my Dropbox, I could click the arrow over here, and you'll notice at the very bottom right we've got two icons now, Email and Dropbox. So right now I can select the images that I want to add to my Dropbox, and then just select Dropbox, and it'll give me a file type. I'm going to save it as a SVG. Uh, Dropbox won't be able to open this up, but at least I'll be able to save it and then download it, say, to my desktop computer at work in order to continue, uh, well, in this case, um, as it's an SVG, I'd be able to continue editing it in, say, Adobe Illustrator. So once those are uh, uploaded, I can quit out of Inkpad. If I go back to Dropbox, I don't know if those files will be in there quite yet, but we oh, there's an Inkpad folder. Yep, there they are. So those are those two files we just uploaded. Now, one drawback to uh, Dropbox is the fact that some applications do not give you the ability to directly upload a file into uh, the Dropbox. And there's probably some good reasons for why they would do that. One of them being maybe they're coming out with an application of their own that uh, kind of duplicates the same features as Dropbox. I'm thinking of Apple's iCloud as an example, and we'll use one of Apple's apps as an example of a tool that does not load directly into uh, Dropbox, but I'll, I'll show you a workaround. So if we were working in Pages, Pages is the iPad uh, desktop word processing uh, application, 
And if I wanted to say, for example, take this file and save it in my Dropbox, maybe I'm a student, I'm working on a report, I'm not completed, I have not completed that report, and I want to save it to my Dropbox folder. Now this requires that the student has an email address, because what you'll end up doing here at this point is you'll end up emailing this to, uh, oops, you'll end up emailing this to your um, self. So if I do share, I'll get the ability to email, and you'll notice Apple does provide some places for you to save particular files. They, they would let you save it to the iDisk, which you can see is a cloud there. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to select email document. And then we're just going to go ahead and we'll keep it in, uh, we're going to either we'll keep it in pages format. And then I'm going to email this to myself. So I'm just going to email it to my, Gmail account. So there's the file. I'm going to email it to my Gmail account. I click send and off that particular file goes to my Gmail account. Now the trick here is uh, when we check our email we're going to see that that, that particular email has an attachment. And um, when, this is going to take a second to load up. when we go to that uh, email attachment, email attachments by default in the mail application have the ability to save directly to Dropbox. So if there's an application that um, a student um, is working on on the iPad that does not natively save to the uh, Dropbox, they can email it to themselves, which I, essentially I guess is the same as uh, putting it to the Dropbox if they want to do it that way. But you can get that into the Dropbox so that you can share it with uh, others. So there it is right there. And here it is. I'm going to click on it and download it. And then I'm going to add this to uh, Dropbox. So I'm going to open in Dropbox. And I'll go ahead and let it save into the uh, I'll just Dropbox here. We'll check a different folder. We'll go to Pages Docs and we'll upload it to this particular folder. And that's one way to get documents that, and actually pages should open up in the iPad. That's one way to get um, documents that you've created on your iPad from apps that don't natively save to the Dropbox. That's one way to get those files into Dropbox. And because Pages is an iApp, it's made by Apple, it de definitely will open up within Dropbox on the iPad. So that's one way you can get files saved from your uh, iPad uh, into the cloud or into a remote hard drive so that you can access them from another computer. Uh, the last thing I want to demonstrate is another nice feature in Dropbox, and that is the ability to share anything that you place in the public folder um, within your Dropbox account. So right now I'm still looking at this Pages document. If I navigate back to my main list of folders in the Dropbox, Dropbox folder, you'll notice that there is a folder under P's for Public. And that particular folder is essentially um, accessible by people with uh, the correct link. You can think of it uh, almost as uh, like a web server um, or web dev types of, of server where anything you place in that particular folder then has a internet link. So maybe I'm working in GarageBand and I have some music I'm creating that I want to share with um, another individual. What I can do is I can select the file that I want to share and then over here on the top right you'll notice that this little chain icon, if I click that chain icon, it gives me the ability to copy this link to the clipboard. Or I can email the link. Same thing. So if I wanted to email my friends this particular uh, audio file, I could put in their address and then it would go ahead and send them this email with this particular link to that file in my public folder in my Dropbox, uh, Dropbox account. 
and that direct link then would give them the ability to download that file or in this case they would be able to play that file and uh, access any file that I put inside my public folder there within Dropbox. I hope this tutorial was informative for you. We'll uh, do another one shortly. Thanks for listening.